Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. The year is starting to wrap up here. Let's see if we can do some Christmas guitar hunting tonight. We'll start with our usual and see where it ends up today. So as far as Gibson guitars, ooh nice teal flip flop. That's not the worst price in the world for one of those if you're an end user. We've seen these a few times in our travels. Essentially they'll turn like a slightly green color and then blue. Looks like this one has a little bit of finish checking. But you know for one of these from 2014, geez that's almost 16 years plus old by this point. This one's actually in pretty good shape and even has a case. But it's a chunky one at 10 pounds. Yeah, I bet you can haggle that down within reason. Like around 900, it'd be fair for that one. What is going on here? 1991 Gibson Les Paul Deluxe Gold Top Heritage Edition. Very rare. Okay, I've never heard of a Heritage Edition one. There's the Heritage 80 and like the Heritage 80 Elite from the early 80s, but those weren't deluxe. So what's this guy talking about? It looks like we get a little bit of a stand rash right there. Deluxe. Okay, Hall of Fame series, I've heard of that, but I'm not sure why he called it Heritage. Maybe he just got some uh, terms mixed up here. Now we've got a Custom Plus, the 90s era Custom Pluses, they're fantastic. It's kind of a lackluster top to be honest, I wouldn't even bother calling that one a plus. Maybe it looks better in person, sometimes that's the way it is. You can see it's got some figuring within this. Ooh, and these large screws tell us that it has the HBL, HBR series. Bill Lawrence, the original pickups, circuit boards and all that, so you can coil split them if you want. However, stock from the factory, they don't have fancy electronics despite being able to do them. I've never understood that. Yeah, and there you go. You can see it yourself. 4,000 is usually where these things cap out. I've got one of these right now. I have it listed at 4,000. Realistically, I would sell mine for 3,500 in a direct private sale. This one's got some replaced parts though. Like the brass nut, and it doesn't have the Bill Lawrence pickups because it's a slightly later one, 97. Not quite as desirable as the early 90s, but the top on this one, it's really cool. It's not what I would consider a monster top, but you can check out the old unboxing video I did on this one. It's kind of a cool guitar. If I had to choose between the two of them, I would be going with the one that I have. But certain cherry sunbursts from the early 90s, they look fantastic. Looks like we got a couple of new guitars. I mean, for this, being brand new, if I was going to review one, I would want something like this. I like the wood grain ring, and then you also get flame on top of that. Not a huge fan of this color choice though. Kind of an interesting top on the 60s standard. Let's see, a whole bunch of new stuff. Certainly we can find something else. Oh, I've got a bunch of people sending me this listing. So this guy watches the show, so I'll try to be nice. <laughs> um, I think it was uh, one or two episodes ago, we actually saw one of these and he picked it up like slightly after I talked about it, but before my video came out. Like he started his little collection here. It's kind of cool for Christmas. You get the green tinsel kind of just like uh, wrapped around the yellow center. It's a rare finish, but in my opinion, it's one of those ones that not enough people really know about, so nobody's actually looking for it. So rare, but not necessarily desirable. However, to somebody that just collects quirky guitars, I could see how they would want the complete collection. I mean, one of these has a pick guard on it, whereas the other one doesn't, so you can show your friends the differences between that. Then the Les Paul, it's kind of cool but it's not something that I would be interested in purchasing for myself. So you can check out his listing if you want. It looks like he wants to move all three of them at the same time. I would say the SGs are cooler because they get the sparkle back. Oh, here's a Les Paul Jr. Unfortunately, we lost Leslie West today. Yeah, that was just a couple of hours ago. I saw it on the Facebook group last night that uh, something had happened to him. The family was not sure if he was gonna make it another day or not. And unfortunately, it looks like this mountain guitarist has died at 75. So rest in peace, Mr. West. Mississippi Queen is such a legendary song. So in his honor, let's take a look at this 57 Les Paul Jr. TV finish, I mean, this is beautiful. I mean, it's a Gary's classic guitars. This guy has the investment grade stuff, the really nice guitars. Cool, how much does he want for this one? 13,995? 
I was actually in the market for one of these uh, about a month or two ago before the guy just decided that, ah, that I'm just not going to spend that much money because he wanted one for $10,000 and finding that in clean shape just wasn't possible. So all things considered, I don't think this is too crazy of a price. What have we got going on here? So it looks like somebody has been influenced by Joan Jett. If this is actually a 60s melody maker, it'd be a 1965 or 66. But it looks like they've upgraded the bridge to a wraparound tail that's intonatable. They gave it humbucking pickups, and then they took a page out of Iomi's book and they lacquered the fretboard? <laughs> oh man, I guess they also took that out of the Rickenbacker thing. Ooh, what? They painted over the headstock, but now we have no access to the truss rod. This makes me think it is not actually a Gibson. And it's one of the lawsuit versions of it or a homemade guitar i'm confused it d does it not have a truss rod <laughs> did they put like a new veneer over top of it and then finish or i've got to read the description on this one this is a modded out 60s melody maker with a thick coat of auto paint over top all right you can see where the numbers would have been stamped into the back of the headstock as well as the three holes okay so this one used to have a trim that's good, that's looking good, but it still doesn't explain where our truss rod is. I mean, it looks right, but something tells me whoever painted this had no idea how a guitar worked at all. Like, did they just completely fill it in? I don't know about you guys, but if you can't adjust the truss rod, the guitar's pretty much toast, so I don't think I can suggest paying 899 bucks for it. However, I would be interested to see what type of pickups might be in here. I'm doubting it's anything too high end, so buyer beware on that one. You don't see one of these things every day. Firebird 2, aka the Artist Curly Maple Top CMT. So these things are kind of freaky because, yeah, I mean, look at that headstock. Sometimes you can find uh, prototype versions of these with like the victory neck on them or something like that. A complete maple body, three-piece maple neck. These things are usually pretty heavy. I really like that neck. They did a good job on that. But unfortunately, I'm not interested in this one because somebody's swapped out that bridge pickup. But these guitars are strictly collector instruments, in my opinion. And hey, did you guys know that there's a different type of Gibson Firebird? These things never get talked about. I'm not sure why. I mean, you get this little Firebird here that's just taking over the entire pick guard. Kind of looks like a... A dove that was caught on fire for the bridge. Inlaid firebird right there. Some other mother of pearl and abalone inlay. The inlays themselves are just, they kind of look like crowns, but I think they're going for flames. And then it kind of takes after the dove in the fact that we get the maple back and sides. Looks like a three piece neck. You know what? I'm gonna add this one to my list. I want Gibson to make me one of these, but in Les Paul format have the same inlays maybe give it like a some sort of a fire burst finish that'd be interesting the firebird les paul because they've got the inlays they should be able to do it these things you know a couple of days ago i started to really look at them because i think i saw somebody playing one on instagram i would normally look at these things and be like who in the right mind is actually going to buy one of these things because a you have to have the disposable income to throw five figures away on this hundred year old guitar that probably needs work and then what are you actually even gonna do with it like it's a harp guitar it's so different but then i started to listen to how people use these things and how boisterous they sound and then i started to go huh Maybe I do want to check one of these things out. I think it'd be a fun review and demo, but um, I know nothing about the market of these. So this is one of those guitars if somebody offered to send one in in exchange for a review and demo. Yeah, yeah, I would have to accept that because they're just kind of weird and they're part of Gibson history. <laughs> what is that? G Gress Wild Cherry Baritone. So in my general feed, I have Gibson and like baritone guitars. So sometimes I get weird stuff like this. It's like a Les Paul meets an SG or something. Um, 
I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. I do like extended horn instruments like that. They usually balance really well when you're sitting down and playing. Bolt on neck. It looks like they just grabbed some regular telly stuff, threw it on this body. Looks like some sort of a fender influenced neck, whatever that is. What's our story? Okay, so it's a DC Kunkel baritone neck. The body itself is wild cherry. Oh, maybe he did it for balance reasons, the extended horn. Apparently, he's made 185 handcrafted instruments. He's in Alaska? Oh, wow, I didn't even check that out. Juno. And our last one here today, Les Paul Traditional Mahogany. Okay, so this one is in Japan. Not too bad of a shipping price considering the climate. I really like these satin finished Les Paul standard type guitars, especially when they have mahogany tops. There's been a few limited edition ones. So this one's a traditional, which kind of makes it like a standard when the standard was not the standard. <laughs> is it actually a mahogany top or is it maple? That, that looks like mahogany to me with the wood grain. There's a particular guitar of the week that they did in, I think, what was it, 2007 that had this exact specs. They're really comfortable guitars to play and they have a tone like no other. They're really airy and open. I mean, it doesn't appear to be in that bad of shape. I mean, these photos make it look more beautiful than it would ever be in person. Satin finishes don't do much for the cosmetics and they start to shine up over time, but I would suggest checking one of these things out. So I don't normally do a playing demo at the end of this, but in honor of Leslie West and uh, just recently, uh, Jared James Nichols, he lost his father. So I think it's only natural that we feature him playing one of the best songs from Mountain. May they both rest in peace. All right, chocolateites. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.